like. Well, thank you all for taking a few minutes this evening to spend with us here to talk about the fall fair. So we do appreciate your time. We'll be very respectful of your time and hopefully get out of here on time, if not early. But before we get started, let's go ahead and just bow our heads and really give thanks not only for these blessings here, but just for this wonderful community that cares about St. Paul's. So if you'll join me in saying the Our Father, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. All right, thank you all. we got a lot to cover tonight, so actually I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Glenn. All right, perfect. Well, um, sorry, we're using cheat sheets here. I appreciate your understanding. Um, so a couple of things we want to talk about, kind of the purpose of this meeting. So um, first of all, we'd like to try to keep this as positive and constructive as we can, all right? We, we've listened to a lot of feedback from a lot of people, and we've tried to you know, merge as much of that feedback into what we're going to present today as we can. Um, this is your opportunity to give you know your suggestions and opinions on that, but let's try to keep it you know positive and, and constructive as much as possible. But like I said, all ideas are welcome. So if you have an idea, please feel free to speak up. So uh, with that said, we'll kind of get into it a little bit. Um, we've got lots of plans to try to make some improvements to the fall fair this year. Uh, we want to you know, stick with a lot of the existing traditions that we've had, but wherever we found that those have been you know, having some difficulty in some way or another, we've tried to improve upon those. Uh, so a couple of things that we've decided to work on this year. Uh, one of the new things that's really exciting is a cashier's booth. So one of the problems that at least I know I have is that I don't carry a lot of cash, ever carry cash. And so I get to the fall fair and my kids are like, oh, I want to play games. And I'm like, I forgot to get cash and I you know, can't do anything about that. So this year we're going to start accepting um, other forms of payment. So we can do credit cards, for example. Now. One of the ways that we uh, are looking at doing that is to let you, you know, buy your tickets or food tickets with, with the credit card. Um, so part of that is we're going to be having all of our food vendors work together to offer plates. So these plates will be the same price, so you can go from vendor to vendor to vendor, whichever one you want, and you can get a plate that would be the same price. Um, what that will allow us to do is when you come up to buy these, things with your credit card, we can give you vouchers for your plates, for your dinner. So you can take that to whichever one of the locations you want and, and get a meal. Now, another benefit of that is, uh, you know, for your children. So, you know, you want your kids to have a good meal. You don't want them to, you know, just go spend the money on, you know, just you know, candy and popcorn and soda and whatever stuff. So the idea is you can go up, you can get your tickets for them to have, you know, fun on the rides and, and all the other games, but also meal tickets so that they can go up and you'll be you able know, to feel pretty comfortable that they're going to get a decent meal and not just you know, sort of pop and candy. Um, so one of the other things we're going to do is we're going to continue with the idea of using volunteer spot. So one of our problems we've had is just, you know, who's going to you know, sign up and what's going to be there to sign up for. And we found that volunteer spot does work pretty well for several of our events, and so we're going to be using that this year for the fall fair. Um, so we've are planning on opening that up, if I remember correctly, at the picnic, is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's the plan, so we'll make it available for everyone. Now that being said, we are going to be uh, asking for volunteers for a few positions tonight, Joanna will talk about that a little bit later here, but we've got some key positions we'd like to try and get some coordinators to help us out with. Uh, so on that, we end. All right. As we looked at the fall fair, just big overall. There are always some things that are going to be more revenue generators than others, and there's also some that are a lot of parent involvement where there doesn't necessarily need to be. So keeping you guys in mind and trying to save as much room as possible, we are actually retiring a couple of booths, and those, number one, are the cakewalk, so you guys will not have to bring in cakes or cookies or make anything. Uh, the second one is actually the laser tag because it takes up a big portion out there and it just does not get used as much as we would like it to be. 
Um, in retiring those, we are still going to keep the popular things like the face painting. The orbiter will still be here. Uh, we're going to do a rock wall, the bounce houses. All of those will still be here. So we're not losing main things that really draw people in. It's just those two things that we've kind of planned on so far, and we might be changing a few of the other games out. Um, and then we're actually going to be introducing some new features this year. There's going to be a teen hangout and a Nerf gun room. The teen hangout, I mean, the kids are going to be able to plug in their chargers, charge their phones, sit down, keep cool, just hang out with their friends. Uh, the Nerf uh, gun room, I mean, kids can bring their Nerf guns and just go for an all-out war in the nice, cool shade downstairs. That way they're not overheated outside the whole time, and it gives them something fun to do. Uh, there's also going to be new food options and a dinner show from the Polynesian uh, group on Saturday night after Mass. They're going to come out and do a whole one-hour dinner show, and they're actually going to be having a booth here to, this year. So that'll be wonderful. It's the Polynesian group. Oh, yeah, that's always here. Yeah. Sorry. That's okay. Yes. Are they going to have the fire knife? <laughs> We're going to see. That would be my guess. <laughs> Are you volunteering? <laughs> you sure? We can start rehearsals. I don't think it's too late. Um, and then uh, we are actually working on more seating. There's going to be a lot more chairs and stuff out there. I know last year we came even before Daniel was enrolled in school and we had to sit out here on the grass. And so one thing that we've heard a lot of is just that there needs to be more space to sit and eat. And it needs to be kind of directed away from the speakers all the time too. That would be really helpful. So we are incorporating a lot more seating area. And we're thinking about doing an alumni area so that people who have graduated from St. Paul's can come back and be welcomed in. And uh, we're taking a look at exactly what that's going to uh, be involving and incorporating, but that is definitely something in the works. So, oh, and live radio spots. I just got confirmation today that Salt and Light Radio is actually going to come out and they will be doing a live spot on Friday evening during the drive home, five to seven. We're trying to get um, the Spanish uh, version also here. So uh, I will be kind of uh, finalizing that tomorrow, actually. I've got and, contact over at KTSY to do the same thing and come out. Now, in years past, they have charged for that, which is not something we want to necessarily climb on board with. So that's going to take a little more finessing. I've got a different person to talk to now. So let's just see if my charm um, <laughs> gets us any miles. But on the other end of the spectrum, I don't know how many of you have teenagers who listen to Christian, a little more edgy music. There's a station called Project 88.7. Okay, so Project 88.7, is, it has more of like an underground kind of feel. Um, they don't have a phone number, like literally. It took me a couple of days to wrap my head around the idea that they only communicate through Facebook. I'm like, oh, so by now they may have responded to me. <laughs> we'll see. I, I, I sound like an old person when I'm on Facebook. I'm like, um, hi, <laughs> you're really cool. <laughs> Would you like to come to the St. Paul Fall Fair? <laughs> so we'll, we'll see if I can, again, work some magic. Um, other promotion, fun stuff. I don't know how many of you, I don't know, I actually probably wouldn't have touched you at all, but um, how many of you guys have children who have participated in or are participating in the Nampa or Caldwell Summer Reading Program? A couple, a few. Okay. So, did you ever see this big old stack you get when they reach a certain level? You get coupons. My kids call them coupons. They're really kind of fun. Um, you get stacks of these things, okay? Well, I called over to the Nampa Public Library, and they said yes to handing out to every child who finishes the program a $5 game ticket. Okay, so if your kids are participating and they get to the end, they're going to get one of those $5 punch cards. These are specially made up, specifically congratulating them on achieving, telling them St. Paul believes in them. It says on the sides, free, free, free. This is a free family event. Your children can come and play for free, free, free. Of course, we know when the parents get here, they're going to want to stay, which is what we want. So we actually did this one year, several years ago. I don't even remember which principal it was, but at the time, um, the library asked permission to print 400 game tickets. That's how many they wanted. This year when I asked them, they do all the printing, they do everything. All I did was design it. 
Um, when I asked them this year how many they expected to hand out, they said 14 to 1600. Wow. <clears throat> Praise God. Mm -hmm. If one per 10 percent of that comes back, that's 140 to 160 families coming back. Okay. Great opportunity to showcase our school and just to make this a wider community event. Okay. So lots and lots of fun and excitement. Let's bring them in here. I personally am going to talk to my husband and see if we can budget in enough money to buy a punch card for each of our friend, our kids' friends in the neighborhood. And give it to the parents saying, hey, why don't you come hang out on Saturday afternoon? That's where we're going to be. Here, let the kids play for free. Five dollars to be a friend. It's not bad, right? Treasure juice. So call it uh, let's see what else. Oh, activities for young kids and teens. I'm going to expand a little bit more, more on what Leanne was saying. Um, we are going to keep all of the popular favorite foods. The face painting, the hairspray painting. Not my favorite, but my kids seem to like it. Um, <laughs> you have to go to the house. Why did you do it? You're not in college. Um, <laughs> we fight with that. But it's always interesting seeing the altar servers at Mass, isn't it? With their funky hair. Uh, so yes, all the kids' favorite foods are still going to be there. The Nerf Zone is going to be, I don't think Leanne actually mentioned it. The Nerf Zone is Dempsey Hall. All of Dempsey Hall. So we're going to work with maybe PTO and maybe some of our own personal resources to bring in some Nerf guns, buy a thousand or so darts from Costco, and just have it on a timer. So the kids will come in, we'll mark off half of their card or whatever we think is appropriate for admission into the Nerf Zone, and then they'll have like 15 minutes to go wild. So there's no net cost to us, and in the end, maybe we can get, you know, youth group to pay for the next guns, right, if they're going to use them in the future. Uh, we'll talk to them about about that. Um, speaking of youth group, our teen hangout area is going to be right there. We're going to fix up that fence, aren't we? But it's going to be that fence area. There is a door into um, the youth hut from there. Did you guys know that? There's a door entering into the youth hut area. So it's going to be the indoor-outdoor area. Uh, this is actually going to tie in with um, the youth ministry program. Uh, Mark Henry is our new youth ministry director, and he stepped right up and said that he would personally run all the shifts for that. We'll also have some parent volunteers. Jo Chad Lawson is going to bring in Guitar Hero and Rock Band. Rock Band, is that it? <laughs> Something I, that I don't know about. Yeah. <laughs> he has drums and two guitars. Yes, and two guitars. Yes. This is going to be fun. So the older kids aren't going, <laughs> so, and it gives them privacy. That's what they're going to want. They have the opportunity to be in the pool. They have the opportunity to hang out. They have some comfortable chairs. Do you have an age limit for that? We will be working with Mark Henry to make sure that it is kept within a certain span. Yeah, we don't want any creepers in there. Right. My daughter would want to go do it, but she's obviously way too young to do so. I doesn't yeah. know I do a lot of it. She'll always be part of it. You know what I mean? So We'll, we'll try and, and find a happy medium. I'm sure if anybody can do that, Mark can do that. Okay. He's got a way. Right, Mark? Right, yeah, we've got to do it. So we're going to trust them with that. But thank, thank him for stepping up. Randy died. He's just going to step in and take over that for us. Um, eighth grade booth changes. I don't know how many of us this is going to affect. <laughs> eighth grade. Uh, the 8th grade booth is no longer going to be an 8th grade booth. We're going to go in a new direction, which means we're going to leave that direction behind. The kids are not going to be forced to sell things just to raise money for the class. There are going to be other, better, more original fundraisers that we'll be in shooting for the 8th graders, so don't be looking for that. However, the 8th graders will remain very involved this year. So they will be doing things to benefit the fall fair bottom line and not the 8th grade top bottom line. So they'll be doing things like hanging out in the youth hangout going, hey, Bags of popcorn, dollar each, bottle of water, 50 cents, whatever it's going to be. Okay? So we're going to make sure that their involvement is more fall fair centric and kind of brings it more into a service thing and not a self-serving thing. So that's our A3 update news. Uh, Sherry, I skipped you at first. So that's okay. Good. I'm going to go back. Okay, yeah, sure. Okay. That was my mistake. I'm things. sorry. That's okay. No problem. <laughs> So first I wanted to um, make sure that we recognize um, the former chairs. We are working off some pretty fabulous notes from um, Pamela Chris's from years ago, and Stacy Grant did a great job for the last several years. And um, we're just building off that. And with everything, when you're doing some kind of event, you always learn something new at the end. So we are just, as um, the parish and school went through the start-stop-key process, 
we sort of did that ourselves and said, you know what, what has been working, what hasn't, um, what do we want to try that's new. So, and, that, and this really, it did come from the first meeting that we had back in May that we heard loud and clear that we need some area for the youth. And so that's why we're having the youth lounge and it, it will be real specific to the youth um, for them to have some space of their own. Yeah. So we wanted to thank those previous um, chairs. They're not here, but in spirit. Um, we do have a video camera rolling, correct? Okay. So uh, because not everybody can be here, it's summer. We thought that it would be really nice to be able to videotape any meetings that we have so that we can then go post it and, and people can view and see what the new changes are. If they have questions, they're going to reach out to any one of us. Um, Glenn, you can speak to that when I turn it over to you on where he's going to park that video. So you guys, if you want to go back and review that. We just thought that was a nice thing to do for people and we have the technology to do it because he's the guy. Um, again, you know, we are just here as volunteers to raise as much money as we can for the school and build community. And not just community here at the school, but in the parish and at the community at large. And so there's a couple things that we're doing, um, like St. Joe's uh, over in Melba, they're our parish uh, mission. And they've actually stepped up, and, and you'll be talking, Jonan will be talking about this here in a minute, but they actually want their youth more involved. So Megan Volkers is over there. She runs the, the RE program. She's, she's taken over. They've said they're going to go ahead and, um, uh, what's, um, coffee what, hut? Yeah, the coffee, it's called Coffee, um, coffee an yeah. Italian Soda Booth. And that's a new booth that we're going to feature. And they're going to actually run it for us. They're going to, she will coordinate the volunteers. And so they're coming over from Melba, but they're bringing all their people. Um, a couple of things that we're going to, you guys probably remember the food drive that we did for St. Vincent. You bring canned food in. So I've gone to the local Albertsons and I've said, you know, you typically give $25. Would you double your donation? And we're going to do half of that as a raffle item. And the other half we'll give to St. Vincent de Paul, so it would be $100 in Albertsons that they can go use with the canned food. So that, um, and then she's reached out to the Nampa Library. So we're really just trying to make this a big community event so we can really grow. Because we've been making $25,000 now for years, and we gotta, we got to get it to thirty-five. dollars I mean, we just have to. So I think this is the year. This team right here, these, these four people right here, you've got the best. They are amazing, and so if anybody can do it, they can. Okay, so then um, one of the things that we're going to do new is what we're calling a snack shack. Because uh, CWL, I've been on CWL running the country store for probably 12 years, um, Chris, Christy, and I. And, you know, while we make good money, it's $1,000, it takes up a lot of real estate. And it's prime real estate. It's in the shade. And so, because I've been running it, <laughs> I said, we'll relinquish that. And that's where we're, we're going to set up all those extra seating and have kind of an alum area there. So, you know, some people here are a little bit older, they need shade. So we'll have that. The country store is not going away, it's just being minimized. And it will be part of this snack shack. And it will be one of those quads. Um, it will have the caramel apples, it will have the country store, we'll do snow cones, and then the coffee and Italian soda. So it's really, you can just go get a snack um, of any sort right in, in the same area. So we're probably looking for somebody to, to kind of run that deal. Okay. Uh, okay, so raffles this year. Um, we've been doing the same raffles for years. And so um, Mireya, Pena, and Teresa Lil, is it Lil or Lial? Lial. Yeah. Um, they mm -hmm. stepped up and said they'll help us with raffles and come up with some really creative ideas. So more to come on that. They're working towards that. And let's see. Do you want me just to go ahead and talk about sponsorships and then turn it back over to you? Sure, go for it. Okay. So my primary role is to work on sponsorships and really procurement of items. And so we've actually had Giving Hand that gives a lot to the school on a regular basis. They have already stepped up and sponsored a thousand dollars. And so the Knights of Columbus are gonna sponsor. Um, I've got food booths. There's only four this year. Three of them are covered. So we are really looking. I would like to have ten or twelve thousand dollars in sponsors just right out of the gate. Um, so if anybody wants to sponsor as a family to promote, you know, put your name in lights, 
or you know have a business that you want to uh, promote, just call me and we'll get a sign made up for you. If you've got vinyl that you want to, just give me a call. But it's it's good stuff. The Giving Hand just came to me and said, we, we would love to sponsor. We want our name here. And so it's all good stuff. Very good. Okay. So I'm going to turn it over to Joni. Okay. I think I need that pencil back. Um, I made this up two days ago and it's already changed like three times. <laughs> Which is good. That's what yes, yes. Good. yes. God, the dollar store. <laughs> all right. So um, I know it's really hard to see from my back end. Yeah. You will be able to come up. <clears throat> so this is kind of our... At a glance, it's going to change. It's probably going to change colors. It's going to be incarnated into a digital form if my husband has his way. Uh, so this is kind of just a big, broad view. Here's the stuff that's definitely going to stick around. There's stars around stuff that's new because I have an eight-year-old daughter who likes to stick stars. Um, we have a list down here of coordinators, the ones who have already signed up, committed. God bless them. Uh, we also have a couple of open spots, which as of today, one change, which we already announced, St. Joseph's is stepping up to take over the coffee hut. So they're going to be like our area leaders. They're going to be the coordinator. And that is, that was fun. <laughs> That's what I would have been like. If uh, nobody else is willing to do that, I'd do that one. Um, the other one I can't believe is still open is Nerf Zone. Who knows, maybe by the end of this meeting I'll be taking more off. So what was the other one? Knights of Columbus are going to do... Oh, they do security. Security. Knights of Columbus committed to security, so we're going to take that one down. And I would love to see people who are interested in getting, A, getting your volunteer hours in, boom, done, um, and B, just want to bring some, some interest and excitement to this. We've got a lot of excitement, okay? We're really enjoying this. Mm -hmm. I, I want to create like a big sign. I probably will on the on board that says fall in love with your fair all over again because I feel like that's what it's going to be okay it's not going it's it's not going to change to the point where you're like what the heck is this but it's also going to be fresh and interesting enough we're going to have a new priest joining us we're going to have Father John we're going to put him in the dunk tank <laughs> because it's like a baptism <laughs> you know, if we can bring ourselves and our beautiful dynamic personalities the community is going to see it we're going to shine it's going to be like beacons of light flowing out of here okay. as long as the power doesn't go out <laughs> so i think with all of our positive energy it won't rain and um that said i would love to hear from anybody who would like to step up and oh, help us Joni, and let me Commit sweeten the pot just a little bit if you guys sign up to be one of these coordinators, you do not have to work a game booth <gasps> at okay, all. Okay, I didn't know that. <laughs> so, <laughs> just making it a little bit sweeter for you. Okay. Yes. My husband always does set up, but he can't do take down. Okay. That's okay. So okay. If it's a two-person team, a lot we of We actually do separated out no. set up, and mm -hmm. then take down clean up could be another. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That is a perfect two-person yeah. Coordinated effort. So but yeah, it's mostly so. coordinating people, isn't it? it? Rather than actually being there, it's yes. coordinating who's going to help you, how you're going to get it, or who's going to have the trailer, who's going to rent. Oh, it helps to be right. there. But that's what no, we're looking I mean, for tonight, though. Is you need, for right now, we need, we need the leader. We don't need the grunts. We need the leaders. Trust me. If you have a choice of being well, the leader or the grunt, I think he, uh, you can put him down for right now. I think he. And, and I think back Come here. Get it. Um, the orange pencil of love. Bennett. Yeah. Terry. Talk to Terry. I don't necessarily need to be a coordinator, but I was going to say I have the, the flatbed trailer that you've used in the past. So you and Brian can be. So there yeah, you go. Sure. Yeah. There you go. Brian. There you go. Yes. I can't get. To him. Yeah. Why don't we What's do your husband's name? Brian. Brian apply for the raffle team too. Pardon? Does that apply for the raffle team as well? For the no raffle is taken. So, um, so if you if you actually lead an area, we're hoping that enrollment is up enough. And, and because again, none of us have done this, and I've not been boots on the ground seeing how many game booths are empty, and we've had to close them. I don't know that information. Laura might be able to speak to it. Do you want to speak to that? Um, I two years ago we did indeed have to close down some game booths, but um, it's. It's kind of flexible because then people will just go to the other ones. And and Saturday, typically from noon to four, is really kind of dead. Okay. So it's not that big of an issue. Uh, the only thing I would say is 
Um, if you have friends and, and family that and are extended, teenagers, teen, uh, um, high schoolers, you know, we can always use people in the booths. Um, you know. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. so my question is, if Mene and I are hitting up the raffles, are we also going to do hours in the game booth? So she just said, oh, if you sign right. up, you don't have to do game booth. Well, and I honestly, our goal is to not have you in the game booth. And that is because we need leaders in charge. There's not been leaders. So if you, if you think about the gala and all the people sitting around that room that are leading each um, if, little section of the gala, we need those people in the room preparing and planning so that it's not all just on one person. And so as long as we can get maybe high schoolers and the youth group, uh, Mark Henry's kids were helping us, I think we should be fine. I think we should be fine. And we'll know because we'll have volunteer spot and we're going to whittle away some of those games. And um, so that, yes, that is the absolute goal. So if you guys are willing to, because we have a meeting in July and they'll talk about it, but that meeting will be for the leaders to come and talk about all the things that need to get done. Um, so you're putting in your hours. I think, Teresa, were you wondering because much of your work, 99% is done before the fair? Right. Well, you just, she just said she was sweet in the pot that yeah, you right. signed yeah. up as a coordinator. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah. No, right I think, there. So yeah. If there were people like, if I was part of that, right. then you not listed as a coordinator. Right. Yeah. 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 yeah, I think she was just saying that all the coordinators are exemplary. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So, this is an opportunity for you to become a coordinator. We'd love to see somebody who's having fun with the rides and inflatables. I mean, gosh, if that's not easy. What does that entail? Like. Yeah, that's contacting kind of my question. the resident inflatables These companies and, and coordinating them, mm -hmm. delivering or you would work with me. Um, for example, the orbiter has already been secured and contracts been signed. Um, really, this, for example, you have kids here that are young. Um, Laura's got kids. I mean, people that are going to be here for a while. If you can look at it as though, okay, if I do rides and inflatables and I understand the process and I know who to contact, them, then next year it's just going to be a lot easier. And, and then we just split up the work. So it would be, because one person having to do all the con calls on the procurement and the food and the contracts and, oh my gosh, the marketing and, you know, just all of it. So if you could work with getting the inflatables um, rented and secured for that date, the orbiter, the rock wall, all that. The orbiter's done. Those kinds of things. It's like a checklist. Here's your checklist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do it. And then contacting where to drop off. I mean, just you own that part of the of the fair. That's the big thing. It's not just you're not going to be given a checklist, right? These are the leaders who are going to help you with with four of us, five of us. We're going to work with these coordinators to figure out well, what does this little part mean? What, what is the checklist that you're going to need to fill out? You're going to be part of helping to, to create that checklist and then see that it gets done. Whether you do it or whether you have volunteers that help you do it, whatever. That's up to you guys. But that, that's that's the lead, leading role that we need right now is people to help with just putting oh, it together. Oh, that's, that's a good one, especially because you're working with professionals. You know what I mean? That's a great one because when you call Roots Rents or whoever we already have a relationship with, they're going, yeah, okay, tell me the date and time. They already have everything in place. You are just being the point of contact. So Sherry doesn't die. Right. <laughs> None of this stuff is really, really hard, right? I mean, everyone here is perfectly capable of doing any of it if, if they choose, right? If they have the time to help us out and have the interest. Um, it, I, don't, I don't want to make it sound like it's scary because it's no, not. No, this has been awesome just saying these guys are awesome and it, it's it's just a lot of fun. Sandy, yeah. you have a question? I can sign up for the volunteer coordinator. Volunteer coordinator. Thank you. And then yeah. I'll work with yeah. you on doing the volunteer spot yeah. and all of that. Yay, thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you guys. Oh. All right. Sandy, what's your last name? Again. Spell it. A-N-G-U-I-A-N-O. U-I-A-N-O. And young. It's like beautiful. All right. Yay, Sandy. So, okay. yeah. I, mean, I just had a question about what, what is Volunteer Spot. So for those of you who don't know, Volunteer Spot is essentially a website that you can go to that's going to list all of the 
volunteer spots, all the slots that we, we need volunteers for. I think it, I realize it's signup.com now. They it is. Yeah. Name, it, it, and it's I just forget it, it, so it's signup.com. But, but what it does is it allows us to get away from having just papers floating all over. And, and one of the problems that can sometimes happen with that is, you know, a disconnect between, well, this person signed up over here and this person signed up over here and it's the same spot. And, oh, no. and the idea is that, you know, it gives us one place to go to that's always up to date. And, mm -hmm. um, and, and people can go sign up on it. So that's going to let people who are comfortable on, the, on you know, computers and on the internet be able to sign up from home. You don't have to come into the office. You don't have to come stand in line and, and do it. Yeah. But, just, for, but for those who aren't comfortable, we are planning on having you know, people who are going to be around, like after mass and such, where you can come up and you can come up and just say, hey, I'd like to sign up for this, or I'd like to see what's available. Because you know, we understand not everyone is, is computer computers that they need to You had a question? Yes, if I coordinate the nerve zone, can I still paint your kids' faces? Because <laughs> I really like so your faces. Want Honestly, no. if, 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 can I, if I could speak to that. So, because you're going to own that area, you really have to own that area. So, you have to be there. So, if, you're go, if you want to go paint faces for an hour or two, that's yes. great. You can, but you got to have somebody that you know is going to take care of the business. That hmm. okay. So just just understand that because if you're owning it, you own it. <laughs> Are we on? Okay. Yeah, I'll cover you for a little bit. See, I'm not on it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> for those of you that know me, is this a good choice? Oh then? heck yes. Because I like to be yeah. involved out here. I like yeah. to paint the faces and be mm -hmm. part of the. Key. Well, the nerf zone is going to be in the dense. Yeah. 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 Air conditioned. Yeah. Okay, never mind. It, I mean, if you're wanting to paint faces, that's one of the game booths be anyway. Better. So that's it would be pencil. better if you spent your time in there. And yeah, yeah. You'll be down there. Huh? You'll be down there. I mean, if you're going to be responsible for that, you're going to have to stay. I think you're going to face painting mm -hmm. Desiree. You said it was going to change. <laughs> it's going to change. Thanks, yes. Teresa. Thank you, Teresa. It's a pencil. And okay, I, so I am all into your Desiree to run the, the face painting booth for the entire fall. Thing. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you know, I'm, I like it. So whatever. Okay, it's awesome. Do none of us ladies have a man who wants to run the Nerf Zone? That's what I was thinking. Too. Oh, yes. come on. Somebody's husband besides mine would love that. Yeah. I'll ask my husband. I'm sure he'll. Oh, yeah. Because you get to stay in the cool. Yeah. You get stay in the cool. And then you don't have to do a game booth. I mean, it kind of is. But yeah, that'll be. Yeah. And keep in mind, you're not gonna, there, nobody's going to be running it by themselves the no. entire two days. When we do the uh, signups.com, you're going to have a whole slew of volunteers. And it's just really your job to get them up to speed, to make sure you coordinate the volunteer efforts, and really just to make it fun. Uh, you know, you're going to be responsible for it, but not in a way that's going to be burdensome, just in a way that's going to be really constructive, and hopefully you can really energize the crew that's going to be working with you whatever shit they have. So that's really the goal here is to really create a really good division of labor, lighten the load, and just make an overall positive experience for everybody attending and everybody helping out. Uh, I know that when I was going to school here, it's like, oh man, fall fair, so much stuff to do. We, we want that feeling gone where it's like, yes, what do we get to do? How can we help this year? You know, we really want to build on something, not just feel it's a burden. Not saying anybody feels that way, but you know, we don't want that feeling to even come close to what we're doing this year, so we really want to make it positive. I just want to say, with regard to the Nerf Zone and the Youth Lounge, because it, it will be in that courtyard and downstairs in the Youth Hut, we're going to work real closely with Mark Henry, Maricela, everybody that knows about safe environment, and there will always be two adults, they will never be alone with the child, I mean that's so very important, so I want to make sure that that's out there, so that you understand that we're going to work to make sure that all that's taken care of, I mean it won't happen unless it is. Um, so. We're very aware because those spaces are kind of away from this area, um, and so we can't do it without making, you know, without doing it correctly. So, would anyone like to nominate someone to be a coordinator? Like you've got somebody in mind who would like to be exempted from game booth responsibility, but for instance, who wouldn't mind running a check? Do you only have three slots available now? For what? Well, I think Ramon is going to do the Nerf Zone. Do you want him to? Do you want to? Yeah, I think Ramon, for, Ramon for Nerf Zone. Ramon, <laughs> Ramon, 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 September 22nd and 23rd, Sorry. Okay. Friday and Saturday. And it's going to be here. Correct. Mm -hmm. So the pair down will be Sunday morning. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Late, late Saturday <laughs> night. <if you> <laughs>
<laughs> well, in the past, it had to be torn down. But we don't have mass here on right, Sundays. Right, we don't have mass yeah. on Sundays. We usually yeah. have done it Sunday yeah. morning. Yeah. 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 It's hard in the dark to, to put things in the trailer. Mm -hmm. it's so set up and tear down, you have somebody. We have one for set up. Ryan Bach and Study signed up for that. Thank you to Ann for volunteering your husband. Um, and we still have takedown is going to be necessary, and that's clean up also. Okay. And that's Terry Bennett. Yeah. You're taking it? Yeah. God bless <laughs> Terry, Terry, well, Terry. 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 Yeah. And if you've done something in the past that you are like, you guys have totally missed it, and it is not on there, you have to say something to us. We're going off 10-year-old notes, and so, and our memory, and so we're not at all ashamed to admit that. <laughs> so, if we're missing something huge, please let us know. For real people, it is really coming together this well. I know it seems like unrealistic, well, okay, now flip it over, right? And <laughs> see all the blank spots on the other side. No, really. It has come together this well. I left off some positions like the wine garden, mostly because there's like 97 people already in charge of the wine garden. <laughs> so, yeah, I did not list all of them. Um, there's actually, there, do you want to know, speak to that, Glenn? Do you want to speak to what? The four, there's four adults in the wine and beer garden, I think, that signed up. Mm -hmm. I don't remember. So we yeah. may have to kind of um, yes. I have split and that divide and conquer kind of thing. If Are they here? Can we talk about them? Um, Torres is here, yeah. Nine House is has not, left. Shumate Shumate is not, and Collins, Collins is not. Okay, so, so we can talk about them. I don't know that we need four adults running the beer and wine garden the whole weekend. I don't know. I've not, but no, I. do you know what they did last year, the year before? Um, I definitely know John's there with the alcohol. Yeah, I did, in the busy times, I think it's helpful to have a lot of people. I'm not sure you need four couples. I don't think you need eight people. Either. Okay. But um, you, you should talk to Javier about that because he yeah. actually coordinated it yes. much more than Perfect. me. Perfect. Good to know. Okay, and I know yeah. he did the um, he, he did does. the licensing and stuff. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. you should talk to him about okay. it. He could tell okay. there. I know there were some times that, like, I think we have even had, like, six or seven people back there because in the really busy times after Mass, it gets really busy. Okay. But then other times, like... Okay, so we can just adjust the. And we, we, yeah. Yeah, they haven't put that on volunteer spot. It's rather coveted. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you gotta know somebody. Is that what you're you saying? Fit personalities, but anyway, I, I'm happy to put it on there. You guys tell me what you want. Okay. You should ask Javier what. So, and, and and you'll speak to the meeting. I'm not gonna jump in front of the next person. Yeah. That sounds yeah. tough. Yeah. When about what that next meeting will look like. But. When will volunteer spot be open? The, the plan is to open it up when we have the school picnic. The school what? Back to school picnic. Back to school picnic. If, if we have it where we're going to do like a uh, go around and meet the teachers and do a search, I guess, like they did last year, in the computer lab with me, I will actually have computers up and running where you can stop by as one of your stops at the picnic to come and actually sign up for those spots. So. That's a great idea. And I think we're doing it August 17th. Does that sound right? Yeah. Just August, August 17th. Was it August 17th? Yeah. yeah. I just found it on my calendar. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So the question um, before the committee or the, the gathering is, do you know anybody who would guess like... We're doing the snack shack. You're doing the snack shack? Yeah. Oh! Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Lacey Luna and somebody I should know better. Angie, Angela Poole. Know your husband. But you don't look like you. So I guess I'm uh, tipping over a little bit. No, Does go. Does anybody have any other questions? I mean, there's not a lot of questions tonight. I'm, I'm surprised. But... Is anybody really disappointed that the cakewalk is gone? Not no. really, because last year we had Thank three cakes so that no one ate. Oh, yeah. So like a big thing. Exactly. And one was mine. No, just kidding. Since I can't see that far, yeah, is there going to be a bingo? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. It's, yeah. it's going to be slightly changed. Um, after consideration, I didn't talk about that yet. Bingo is going to be split with La Lavaria. Okay, so there's going to be scheduled time for its bingo and scheduled times for its lotteria. And we already have a chair for bingo. Jessica Ibarra. Yes, Jessica Ibarra. Thank you. That's right. 
and usually we have no problem getting volunteers to jump in. Uh, La Lottery is not a hard game to learn, but instead of just switching over completely and ditching bingo, I grew up Catholic. I don't know about you guys, we have bingo. <laughs> But we still have parents donating an item for bingo prizes? So. Yes. Or are we going to procure? Okay. Nope. Nope. Donation. Quick question. So when they do setups, they start Thursday, or do they start Friday? Thursday, Thursday night. night. Thursday night. Like six. And cleanup goes all the way till Sunday morning, Saturday. or just all Saturday night really late? Mm. So last year we did it. We did a little bit of both. We, we did some cleanup <clears throat> on you know, that night, but most of it, I believe, was Sunday morning. So, but like the stage, I usually break all that down that night. And I know that anything that's in some, like in the booths, I think we pull that stuff out, but the booths themselves came down the next day. In the booths have to go on the shelves before the booths go in. But then again, you're coordinating it, so <laughs> whatever you like. Two people at the beer booth on Sunday morning. <laughs> <laughs> I'm writing it down. <laughs> Lighting in the booth. I've done face painting, and it is we can't see anything. That's yes. So, but usually at the end of the day, everybody's painted, even some adults. Yeah. So they so stop coming after a time. Yeah, but there is, there is, and it's been really dark, or we're like trying to like scoot ourselves out to try to get some of the light. So we can have something in some of the booths that have light. Like just eliminate like those final spots and turn to your spot. Yeah, yeah just well, well, maybe we can move your, maybe we can switch your booth with another booth. True. But you know, the prize booth now has a light, and so does the, well, it did last year. Joe should move it. Just throw some batteries. I have a question. The teacher check-in booth had a light. So maybe we can move the booth. Booth. Either get another light for you that's closer to those things so that the electrical is all okay. or put you or get you a light for where it was. You yeah, said you, the you, prize you, and the volunteer one? Is that right? Not volunteer, but the prize booth had one and then the where the teachers had the they're selling the tickets and the raffles and all that. Okay. Those two had lights last year. And okay. just make sure um, bingo needs a light. They have trouble. Okay. Yes. And so that's always kind of a panic. Last year Joe did it. But you might just wanna confirm if they're there. Okay. Um, extension cords. Yeah, yeah extension cords are always at a premium too. Andrea had a question. Um, are you gonna like kids come in some of my to what um, like kids come help because if you need help in booths like my older kids would love to help they're not in middle school but i think that they would they could help with something we'll have to talk about that okay. um i from what i can recall we've allowed high schoolers to come in and help I don't, high schoolers, so. High schoolers oh, okay. so, okay. but that is certainly something we talked to Scott and Mark Henry, because um, he does <laughs> high school. But if you need help, they can. You want me to make a decision right now? <laughs> well, I know that in the past that the middle schoolers um, have come out and been able to get up to two hours of service time, uh, setting up like the hay bales and bringing water and tables and all that kind of stuff. Um, I don't, I don't. I don't know why. As long as we've got all the parents and we give them an opportunity to sign up for their hours, oh, okay. if we have major holes and we, you know, we need, you know, a fifth grader in the prize booth or something, as long Never as kids in the no nope, prize booth, okay, <laughs> well, that was a bad example. Perfect. Okay, Sorry, that's, that's, also, that's my rule. I don't need the mean person. Okay, and no alcohol and in the prize no booth. No alcohol and okay, no alcohol. Okay. Oh, um, so what are the requirements for parents? No, <laughs> so the question is, what are the requirements for the parents? So the contract went out, and you signed it, if you registered, and help me out here. It's Now the cake is no longer, you don't have to bring two cakes. However, if you are Christy Thiel, and this has been an annual event for 40 years in your family, and you make those cakes, she can bring them to the country store. So we're not going to take that away from you, but it's not the, for the cake walk. So that's sort of gone. Then there's... Four hours in a booth, or eight hours total, $25 in raffle tickets, which are going to be really exciting this year, and there's one more. What is it? Um, Help me out. Bingo item. And a bingo or country store item. Mm -hmm. So there's three. Okay, so it's still three. eight and then four. And yeah. Unless you need an minimum of four. Everybody does four hours unless your name is up here or you're already signed up as a coordinator. Um, you can do all eight hours in a game room. If you're... Desiree. <laughs> <laughs> I had a comment on the lighting. I, don't, you know, I missed exactly what we talked about about the lighting earlier, but in the past, the string of lights that goes across here has always got a bunch of bulbs out. 
And then some of the lights on the poles in the past didn't work. So I don't know if you have something lined up. Do you have a lighting coordinator? Because that could, you know, let you determine what's needed. Yes, and last year um, for the kitchens, the food booths kept on losing power because the circuits were being overloaded. There is so very good information. You should have need electrician to right. do all this stuff. But you should ask Joe Schneek again, wasn't he? He was sort of. Yeah, I, he got pulled in and ran around. He really the like spent like a day working on electric electrical stuff um, as we were setting up the fair last year, so he would probably have a lot of good information for you. Somebody wanted to have another comment? Wow, this went really good. Well, we thank you all for your feedback. We've laid out a pretty robust vision for this upcoming fall fair. What are we missing? Is there anything that uh, you know we've glared over or just uh, anything that you feel like we really need to bring back that maybe we said we, we weren't going to do? We just want to make sure there's not going to be any holes and three, four months down the road we're saying, oh crap, we're going to do this. For the nurse zone, can we have like a... Uh, wristband like the over here. Oh, wristband. Well, that's so we were talking about that. Um, so we haven't haven't done any of those, made any of those decisions yet. But um, it is a fundraiser, and so with the youth lounge and the Nerf Zone um, down in the youth lounge, also Chad is going to set up um, some um, like a huge screen and show a couple movies throughout that Saturday. And so we were talking about how should we charge for this. So that's on our docket to talk about and figure out, okay, um, could, you know, and, and honestly, the other thing is how, we, they can't just park in the youth lounge and do rock band for five hours. Mm -hmm. So we've got to work through all those details. But everything should at least cost a little bit. Um, but the wristbands, were they gone last year for the orbiter and everything? Or did we buy those $20, it's the whole event, and, and your kids could ride on the orbiter and the rock wall, unlimited. Did we have that last year? Yes. yes we did. But okay. It, except for the game, there's some things carved. Right. Out. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So but so the nerf the things have a. It um, could be a separate from the orbiter, okay. so it could be two separate, separate things because it, it is a fundraiser. But I believe that for a parent, I don't want to keep shelling out. Yes. I would just pay a fee and okay. so have them stand in line. Like a twenty dollar. Like yeah. Yeah, Alright, so yeah. here's something else. Thank you, everybody. Yeah. Oh, here's one more. Um, one more thought. We kind of started bubbling up on the wristbands. We are in favor of the wristbands. Let me, let me just make that clear. Okay, we're just narrowing it down. Personally, in my experience, they're worth more than twenty dollars. Yeah. I'm glad. I'm glad we agree because we will ask you to pay more than twenty dollars. Can anybody throw a price out there? What's well, it depends on what the wristband is for. Yeah, you know, all the extra things. Because there's kids that are young and may want to go to Nerf Zone, but they can't go to the youth hut because hang out because right. they're not old enough. Right. Or they can't go on the orbiter. That's true. So you might want to do just like two and the same. Maybe like a two, two, two types of wristbands. So one at a time. We're going to do one at a time because the ground rules. Because I can't. Okay, go. What's a colored wristband? So, like, last year it was the orbiter and all the bouncy houses. Well, my kid is doesn't want to go any bouncy houses. It's too big. He's not going to do it. And definitely this year he won't do it. The only thing he wants to do is the orbiter. So if it's more than 20 bucks for the one thing, like I'm not probably not going to be wanting to pay for that. What do you do? The nerve zone and the youth hangout? Probably. Well, yeah, definitely that. But I'm just saying from last year, like I paid 15 or 20 bucks for him to do that. Like three times. Is there a rock? Was there a rock wall? Yes. 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 Okay. Just do Gloria. Two color wristbands. You've got the younger kids who cannot qualify to go to the youth. So if you do your older kids like in a, a bright green and the younger kids in the hunter orange, yeah. you'll be able to tell right off the bat, okay, these guys are not going into the youth hut. So is youth hut then accessible only with a wristband? I don't know. These are these are things we had to So so we'll just um we'll we'll take back all this feedback and then we'll talk to Chad and sit and, and kind of get his opinion too because he's going to actually run the the event the whole weekend with help. Um, so we just have to make sure that we rotate those kids out. And so I'm not quite sure how to do that yet. But yeah. 
So Lacey, going back to what you were saying, yes. would it be helpful if we separated like the orbiter and the rock, rock wall from like the bouncy houses where you're paying a separate price just for those items compared to just an overall, hey, you can bounce or do the orbiter kind well, of thing? Well, I'm just or? saying if if you're gonna if you're gonna raise the price, if you were gonna include the nerve zone and the youth lounge mm -hmm. or whatever mm -hmm. with all of that stuff in the then for an older kid it would be worth it but if you're not then the wristband isn't going to be worth it for the older kids if the only thing they're going to be able to use it for is the orbiter and they're not going to want to just stay on the orbiter right. okay. that's what i need mean. we'll have a menu and the good thing is they also <laughs> have to buy the tickets too yeah, yeah. yeah. no well, that's what i'm saying like it would be tickets that we would end up buying yeah okay all right, well, we'll figure it out. Yes, we'll figure it out. Could you do like one day orbiter or all week in orbiter? Or, you know, wristbands type. And the more, if you're going to do all weekend, you can charge more for like, you know, three day pass or one day pass. Okay. Good feedback. You're writing all that down. Mm -hmm. Okay. Awesome. I feel like. Maybe we can go back and see, um, Michelle would probably know, if there was like a, an early bird sale, you know, if you bought the tickets, you got it for a certain price, and then after that date, there were no longer. Okay. So maybe Michelle would know, you know, did did they sell out? If they didn't sell out, then we certainly shouldn't raise the price, you know, or was it just... I don't think they actually. There's, I don't think that there's a max quantity. Yeah. I think. I think if I remember right, it wasn't necessarily like an early bird special. It was you had to buy them before the fire. I don't think we sold them at the No, there wasn't. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. There was a five dollar discount price. Oh, okay, fine. Yeah. But you could still buy them at the fair. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't remember that. Thank you. I didn't know that. Okay. Well, I believe that Stacy said we did sell out of the pre-paid ones. Sell out. And I wonder how that affects the price. I don't know how many they sold, but they sold out. Well, I mean, because I don't, I don't know if there was an amount or if it was just buy them by the state. I think it was by the state. It was the first year I ever bought them for Rankin. So, but it was by this day, I think it was five dollars off per wristband. Okay. Yeah, it's usually like the Wednesday before the fall fair starts. Okay. You have to buy it before that Wednesday and then you get the discount. Just a little incentive, and then maybe more people will buy them yeah. early so you know how many people are going. Okay. I don't know. Perfect. It's good. Okay, good. Do you want to talk about July? Sure. All right. Well, thank you. Okay, sir. I'll have one other comment. Um, Joanne was talking about the media and the radio stations and stuff. Larry Gebert, I don't know if you've ever seen where he comes, but you normally have to do it like a year in advance. Yeah, he pre-records those now. Yeah. yeah, they're all pre-recorded, and since we won't have it set up, it wouldn't be very not a good fit anymore. But you can do a look live. You could do like a set up a mock-up. Yeah. Didn't Suzanne do it last year, and she just did it in the classroom? We did, it, was that for fall fair? That was for some. Or was it for the gala? That was for the gala. Oh, okay. Was it Larry Gibber? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Isabel Bill Oh, okay. Yeah, it was for fall fair. Great. It was for a gala. Because I know of events in the I past. I mean, the gala. That makes a difference on the other people coming in. You know. Yeah, maybe we could. I don't know. I have to watch the news again, but they usually do like a community calendar on Channel 7. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can contact them and see if they can just put us on the community calendar. I'm the communications chair. Okay, so, so I don't... Cover all electronic media and making sure all that... I don't know if they still do that, but it might be something, you know... Yeah, it's a matter of an email and they put it on there. They vet you and then they put you on there. Oh, okay. Laura? It, it can be offline. Oh, I just thought whoever runs the church Facebook could do a Facebook Live of all the people. Oh, maybe. Facebook Live. Or and the school, whoever runs the school's Facebook page. Okay. So I was thinking, I mean, I work with a lot of um, people that have families. And this is an, usually an event that is fairly inexpensive. It's in town. Maybe if we, we could do flyers at, I mean, I would be willing to put one up at work. And, you know, even for the discounted uh, wristbands to make, get maybe more more traffic, more community traffic. Because I have several CNAs that have children in this is a, you know, an inexpensive event. And I think we haven't talked about it yet, but because the, the church office, the, the office is open from 9 to 2 or whatever it is on Sundays, mm -hmm. we will definitely be communicating with the parish um, so that they can maybe come in and purchase them in that office mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Okay, awesome. All right, any other questions, concerns, thoughts, ideas?
Um, one thing I did want to share in uh, inviting the community in and making it a bigger uh, spectrum, I have actually already invited three other liturgical churches in the area, and they have seemed really welcome or really open to actually sending their parishioners. They're going to put it in their bulletins and things like that as well. So if you guys come up with any ideas like that, please let us know so that we can work on doing that as well. All right, well, thank you all. We do appreciate your time this evening. Uh, to kind of go ahead and get everything, get the our momentum going, our next meeting is going to be scheduled for July 25th. So all those people that sign up to be coordinators, go ahead and raise your hands real quick. Mental picture, perfect. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. So let's go ahead and we, so all area area leaders will go ahead and meet here in the same room, July 25th at 5:30 as well. Uh, basically, it'll be a working meeting. We'll go ahead and kind of split in small groups, get some ideas, really set some expectations, and create a working vision. You know, your little areas, those, those are your babies. You can kind of really design it how you want. There's some traditional aspects we want to keep, of course, but definitely we want to make this fun, exciting, and we really want your creative juices to start flowing. So we'll go ahead and meet here again, July 25th, 5.30, this classroom. Uh, we'll respect your time as well. Hopefully we'll keep it to about an hour or so. So any last minute questions before we close? All right. Yeah. All right, cool. Well, thank you very much again for coming. Uh, we'll close in a quick prayer. <clears throat> thank you, Lord, for bringing us all together tonight. Uh, thank you for the great ideas that were presented and for all of the volunteers that have stepped up to help with our school. Uh, please watch over everyone as they go home and have a, a safe trip home. Amen. Amen. Thank you all. Thank you, everybody. Great.